So I was really worried about like, oh man, am I going to be any good? Am I any good at what I do? What if I'm, what if I'm not? What if I'm just a fraud? That's Raven Geneguez talking about our old familiar friend, imposter syndrome. As creators, we deal with a lot of stress when it comes to our work, making a living, following a non-traditional career path. I wanted to interview four different creators about their mental health and mindset journey and understand what it is that keeps them going. I'm Erin Borgignon and I am a glass blower. My family thought I was insane. Like, literally thought I was throwing my life away because I was never shown any interest in art and because all I wanted to do was play soccer. But once I didn't have soccer taking up all my time, I was actually able to pursue other interests. I'm Riley Seebeck. I'm a professional adventure photographer and landscape photographer. <laughs> it's been a struggle, dude. Like, I, I, I can't sit here and claim that I'm an enlightened human or have it even remotely figured out. Driving and driving and working myself to the bone. Cold calling, overthinking. My name is Matthew Callens and I am a small business owner and a creative entrepreneur. We're here at Wave Neuro giving out some samples of shroomy and root strength. Like trying to start a business, trying to start companies, having some success, having even more setbacks. Like if you just put yourself on that path, like there's no, <laughs> the only guarantee along that path is that things are going to be turbulent and be changing like pretty much all the time. It's a difficult journey to try to, to find ways to like escape your mind and escape the thoughts that, are, that you're not good enough to do things, but it's, it's a worthwhile fight. I don't make money if I break something, but the weeks into the project, like, that's real. I have a house, I have a wife, or like soon to be wife, like I have my dog who is a princess and needs, that all takes money. And so there's a lot of stress if I don't perform. <laughs> A lot of stress. I'm so stressed about about trying to afford housing and you see 20 Porsches on the road you know in town in a little in the little mountain town that I live in here you know it's like it's really hard to keep it straight. We're at our local stretch of the river here and it's the second annual kayak race. I'm gonna run down and, and stop at the finish and shoot everybody else coming down and yeah, it's gonna be a good day. Yeah. The reality is, being a small business owner or a self-employed artist has its difficulties, but we have personal struggles too. I definitely have an anxiety problem. I think a lot of people do. Um, and that's really hard to control. I'm just just figuring it out. Like, But it takes a lot of practice and it's, it's, it's been a really painful road. I was in this like really terrible boating accident my junior year of high school. This woman died in the accident and um, it was awful. And I was obviously not to blame, but I had so much guilt and blame for a really long time, even up until like my mid twenties when finally I was just like, you have to let go, even though it's really hard sometimes because life is short, because I should have died that night. I think photos go to die on Instagram. At least that's what it feels like for me because I'm usually putting like a lot of thought in and feeling into that and then you just get fire emojis yeah. and heart eyeballs and a handful of likes, you know, and you're just like, that could have been a print. That could have been in somebody's house that they like appreciate every single day. Up. <laughs> Art for me has always been kind of relaxing and kind of like to zone out as I do it. Even if things have already been done, discovering them for yourself is much more engaging than just reading about them or trying to understand them through someone else. But a lot of things I've been doing now is in the studio, going spray painting, drawing, creating things online, and just trying to take like small sections of those to create like really engaging and interesting textures. Really the thing that balances me so I don't stress too much is doing other things that make me happy like once a day like skating playing soccer reading a little bit you know like I just have to keep myself doing those things because it brings me joy in the smallest like cheapest form and 
it keeps me sane in here. It's the company plane delivering shroomies. You know, my brain does well if I can really focus on one type of work for a certain day. So like if I know that I need to be writing a lot of copy on one day, I'll jumble that together, you know, whether it's like an article and a blog, but then there'll be another day where I'll be driving around, dropping off product at potential new wholesale accounts, talking to the store owners if they're there. And then other days I'll drop into our, our facilities because a huge step in our business was forming equity partnerships with our manufacturer. So that basically allows us to be super hands-on with everything and anything that we want to do. So now with that partnership, we have an entire facility that has the equipment, has the machinery, has the capability to basically dream up anything that we want to get made and have the ability to run test productions. My ability to operate at the level that I need to comes from the level of care that I put into taking care of myself and my mind. If you can have a steady mind, you can listen to yourself a lot more clearly and then you can express it in a better way. Start listening to other people. That's like the one thing that's been huge. If, if you feel that you need help, start looking for it, you know. Dive into podcasts. If you don't like it, leave that podcast. Try another one. There's a lot of people who are dealing with the same issues with you, and as cliche as it is, it helps hearing about that. It helps hearing that other people are navigating through life on the same path as you are. There's really something about physically interacting with nature. I mean, there's a reason they call it grounding, right? Like putting your feet in the grass, like actually physically connecting with the earth. Um, there's something recharging and revitalizing about that that I think is important. Whoa, look at that. Look at that. There are a number of different ways that creators approach mental health, but hands down, everyone agreed, community was one of the best places to get support and feedback. I mean, I live with three of my buddies right now. And honestly, it's been amazing. I get to spend like almost every non-working moment that I'm just at home. I know I have someone that I can hang out with. Or I also have a cat too. Just surrounding yourself with people that you care about, people that love you. <laughs> I've been working at this gym since I was 17. So I was an intern like for summer camps and just coming in, climbing, meeting new people, just being part of like a local community. That's a, that's a huge thing for, for someone, feeling like you're not alone. Having people that love you and that you love them and that genuinely want you to win and want you to be on the right path, but are also, you know, just like that deeper love that's not just like the yes people around you who are like, yeah, great, 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 rah, rah, but more so like the people who can just like watch you grow and create a container for that to happen while also like challenging you and like questioning you in the right ways along the path. It can be lonely when you're doing your own thing, you know, so um, yeah, you just need people in your in your corner who are who you can rely on and you know, I think that's super important.